Whenever we think of USB, we often relate it to the term plug and play because, well, that's exactly what it is. It allows a computer to communicate with peripheral devices such as keyboards, mice, music players, and flash drives. This course will help you understand the USB capabilities that are built into many SDVOE endpoint devices. SDVOE manufacturers choose between two different architectures for USB connectivity. The first method offers USB compatibility limited to human interface devices, or HID, such as keyboards and mice and trackpads. Now, this architecture is available using the Blue River chipset alone, and therefore it is lower cost to implement. The second method, and by far the most popular method, is by integration of a USB Explorer chipset from SDVOE Alliance member Icron, alongside the Blue River chip. Use of this Icon chipset ensures compatibility with the full range of USB 2 devices. So HID, mass storage, cameras, microphones, you name it. Now it's important to be aware of this distinction as an HID only SDVOE device will not be USB compatible with an Icron based device. Although once installed, the end user will see seamless functionality and connectivity between USB devices across the SDVOE network. So let's explore a little more about how these two systems actually work. Let's begin with the ICROM based approach as it's actually the more simple method to understand. ICROM have created a technology which enables USB signals to pass through a distributed system in a way which is totally transparent to the USB device and host. Now, there is some technical magic going on to make sure that the USB protocol itself works, even despite cable and network induced delays in the signals. But as far as device and host are aware, they are directly connected to each other. This has great benefits, such as virtually total compatibility with any USB host or USB device. The transport simply steps out of the way. It also means that no special drivers, beyond those that the device would already demand, are actually even required. Essentially, when a peripheral is connected to one endpoint and the computer is connected to the other endpoint, the Icon chip allows the computer to directly see the peripheral as if it were plugged directly into the back. The icon chips managed by the SDVOE API simply pass these signals directly across. Finally, this means that the device could actually be a USB hub with multiple devices connected, and you are still assured that the SDVOE system powered by Icron, will connect all those devices seamlessly to the PC. One downside to this approach is of course the extra cost for the hardware. A second consideration is that every time you switch USB connectivity, for example, routing your keyboard and mouse to a new PC, the host will see this as a disconnect and reconnect event. And there can be some delay while the PC discovers and syncs up to its new peripheral. Now for a bit simpler and more affordable hardware approach, let's investigate how the Blue River chip can manage USB HID signals on its own. When a keyboard or mouse is introduced to an endpoint, in this case a receiver, with the computer which is being controlled being connected to a transmitter. The endpoints themselves act as USB host and device. So in our example, the SDVOE receiver is a USB host talking to the keyboard and mouse, and the SDVOE transmitter is a USB device talking to the PC and pretending to be a simple keyboard and mouse rather than an SDVOE device. So when the receiver acting as the host detects keystrokes or mouse clicks from the user's real keyboard and mouse, 
It uses Ethernet to inform the appropriate transmitter about these user actions. In response, the transmitter, acting as the fake keyboard and mouse, sends the appropriate keystrokes and mouse clicks via USB to the PC, replicating those actually being made by the user. Because HID is a USB standard device class, virtually all host devices have an appropriate generic HID driver built in, so no special installation is required. These devices are also able to switch instantly because the PC is always connected to the same device, which is the SDVoE endpoint. The PC is unaware of whether the keystrokes it receives originated from a keyboard attached to receiver A or receiver B. And for KVM installations, this instant switching is a strong advantage. The hardware cost is also likely to be less when only managing HID devices. The only real disadvantage, of course, is the HID only limitation. Specifying the correct SDVoE hardware on any project is important, and manufacturers will offer a choice of cost effective SDVoE hardware solutions to support a wide range of project budgets and needs. Don't be afraid to ask about the USB capabilities of the endpoints that you specify, because a wrong decision can be really expensive. Why not become a certified design partner today and join our growing community of SDVOE professionals.